What a wonderful day! I am a big fan of the rebooted Planet of the Apes trilogy that started back in 2011. Caesar's story is one of the best told in cinema, and the whole trilogy is one of the best blockbuster trilogies. Andy Serkis' performance as Caesar is great and is one of the best ever. The reboot itself is also one of the best reboots ever. The only issues I had with that trilogy overall was that human characters weren't that interesting and the pacing of the movies. I think even if the human characters are not a focus in the story, when you write them and they serve to tell the story, they have to be well written. And also the movies did have pacing issues where it kind of felt that they dragged in some bits, without much happening. So when Disney that got the rights of the Apes franchise after buying 20th Century Fox and they announced a new movie, I was excited to see what they would do. And I have to say that after watching this movie, they didn't disappoint. And I think this entry is the best in the franchise. I will go through what I think about the movie later, but now I will be going into the plot, so if you have not seen the movie, there will be spoilers. Many generations after Caesar's death, apes have established numerous clans, while humans have become feral. Noah, a chimpanzee from a falcon cry practicing clan, prepares for a coming of age ceremony by collecting eagle eggs with his friends Anaya and Sona. However, a human scavenger follows Noah home and inadvertently cracks his egg during a scuffle before fleeing. While searching for a replacement egg, Noah encounters a group of ape raiders using electric weapons. As Noah hides from them, the apes follow his horse back to his clan. Noah hurries home to find his village burning. The raider leader Silva kills Noah's father before dropping Noah from a high platform. Left for dead, Noah awakens, discovering that his clan has been abducted. He buries his father and sets out to rescue his clan. On his journey, he is joined by Raka, an orangutan who tells Noah about Caesar's teachings. The apes notice they are being followed by the human scavenger. Raka offers her food and a blanket, naming her Nova. When the trio encounters a group of feral humans, Silva's raiders suddenly attack. Noah and Raka rescue Nova, who, to their surprise, can speak. She reveals that her name is May, and that the raiders took Noah's clan to a beachfront settlement outside an old human vault. As they cross a bridge on their way to the settlement, they are ambushed by Silva. In the ensuing fight, Raka saves May from drowning, but is swept away by the rapids. Noah and May are captured and taken to the ape's settlement. Noah reunites with his clan and is introduced to the ape's self-proclaimed king, Proximus Caesar. Proximus has enslaved other clans, forcing them to work on opening the vault so he can access the human technology locked inside. This is important. They get cold. Show mercy. Proximus invites Noah to dinner along with May and Treviton, a human prisoner who has accepted his status and is teaching Proximus about the old human world, especially ancient Rome. Proximus believes that Noah's intelligence could help open the vault and warns him that May only has her own interests in mind. Noah confronts May, demanding the truth in exchange for his help. May discloses knowledge of a hidden entrance to the vault and says that a mysterious book capable of restoring speech to humanity is inside. Noah agrees to help her enter the vault, hoping to destroy Proximus' settlement and lead his clan back home. Noah, May, Sona, and Anaya secretly plant explosives around the levee that surrounds the settlement. Triton catches them and intends to warn Proximus, but May kills him. The group enters the vault, which is revealed to be a military bunker housing a stockpile of weapons, as well as May's book, which is actually a deciphering key for a satellite. 
The apes discover old picture books depicting humans as the once dominant species and apes in the cages at the zoo. As the group makes their way out of the bunker, they are confronted by Proximus and his tribe. One of the Proximus apes threatens to kill Sona, but May kills him with a gun she found. Proximus excitedly tells May that she can leave if she tells him where the other guns are. May refuses and triggers the explosives, flooding the bunker with the apes inside. May flees the settlement while the apes climb to higher ground through the bunker. Noah is pursued by Silva, but Noah traps and drowns him. Noah escapes the bunker with his clan, but he is attacked by Proximus. Noah leads his clan in summoning their eagles to attack Proximus and send him falling off a cliff into the sea. As Noah's clan returns to rebuild their home, May arrives to bid farewell to Noah. Go back. She explains that humans deserve another chance, since they were once the dominant species, but Noah questions if apes and humans can coexist peacefully. As Noah takes Sona to look through a telescope he found on his journey, May travels to a human settlement at a satellite base which is kept quarantined from the outside world. May delivers the decipher key, allowing the humans to reactivate the satellites and successfully contact other humans worldwide. So that was the story of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. And I have to say that this movie not only met my expectations, but it exceeded them. First of all, the new character of Noah is a good successor of Caesar. And he is a much different character than Caesar despite looking like him a lot. He has different mannerisms, voice and philosophy. The movie is beautifully shot, the cinematography is amazing with many wide shots, camera movements that serve the story in a great way. Also of course we have to talk about the CGI, because the CGI in the first trilogy was amazing. This movie keeps that tradition alive, and the apes and their environment looks great. This story takes place 300 years after the events in the first trilogy, and Caesar is long dead, and Proximus Caesar is the one leading the apes, and he is a good villain in this. Despite his kind of short screen time, we get his motives and how he operates, and how different he is to Caesar. Also this time around, we do get a human character that is well written and developed as a character. She is more interesting than all the human characters put together in the first trilogy. And I think that is the biggest improvement that this latest movie has. You get a more two-sided conflict with stakes at both sides this way. The original trilogy had some weak human characters and some bad pacing to them. And as I said, in this movie they have some better human character writing, but the bad pacing issues I think still remain. It is a 2 hour and 25 minutes long movie, and there could have been some scenes that could have been cut. Movie kind of feels longer than it needs to be, but overall this is a great new chapter in the Apes saga, and a good continuation after the Caesar story, which I am intrigued to where it goes next. I am giving this movie an 8 out of 10. This has been my first non-horror review in a long while. I thought that I would try to make a non-horror review this time around and see how it goes. I like other genres too, even though my channel is primarily horror. If you liked this video, please like, share and subscribe. This has been Boogeyman Cinema. Thank you for watching. What did you think of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Please let me know in the comments. Apes.